Hey everybody and welcome to Let's Look at Mount Your Friends. It's been a while, you've probably seen me play Mount Your Friends before in uh, either the recent past, if you watched the last Northern Lion Live Super Show we did, or uh, maybe even a little bit uh, more distantly. I'm just gonna crank the volume down just a little bit here. We can probably afford to have six and maybe like seven there. All right, um, Mount Your Friends is a silly game for silly people. It's now out on Steam, it went through Greenlight, it started out on Xbox Live Arcade. Uh, sorry, Xbox Live Indie Games, not that that's much of a distinction, I guess, in this day and age. I'm not sure what's going on with Xbox Live Indie Games, actually, now that the Xbox One is out. Um, but in any case, it's finally uh, made it through Greenlight, made it on Steam, it's five bucks, and it's a lot of fun. It's really silly, but it's kind of like, uh, Nick and I played the competitive multiplayer modes online. It does have online multiplayer, which is one of the biggest draws versus like the previous, you know, alpha or beta version that we played last summer uh, and throughout the year. Um, but the online multiplayer is really fun. We're probably not going to get to check it out here because this is just slightly prior to its release. But watch the, you know, the July 28th Northern Lion Live Super Show and you can watch Nick and I play it for an hour and have a great time uh, with one another. It's a little bit like competitive co-op, actually. We're going to play some single player ourselves and there's enough going on in the single player. Uh, to to be fun as well, we're we will start with a basic climb, I guess. I will say that I think the uh, the single player is a little bit not necessarily super engaging compared to the multiplayer, but um, you know, considering the online multiplayer actually works, it goes a long way. So you might be wondering. First off, why the heck is everyone wearing suits? And secondly, what the heck is everyone doing? Well, I've got everybody decked out in suits uh, to show off the uh, safe for work version of the game. There is a not safe for work version of the game. It has a, you know, kind of like dangling Jimmy Johns there. Let me go back here a second. I'll actually go back to the main menu and I can show you briefly um, if I go to the settings here what it looks like. There you go. I mean, it's probably still safe for work. They're in a thong there and, you know. That's part of the draw of the game, I guess, is that, you know, little Tamagotchi egg rattling around in there, but I don't know, better safe than sorry from my perspective. We're going to go back to the basic climb here. So basic climb basically gives you, um, it, it's, you can't play it ad infinitum, but you have a pretty lenient kind of uh, win condition here. Really what you're trying to do is, is basically score attack, you know, set a high score relative to uh, the people you're playing against. And we'll see how we, we fare in the leaderboards here. I've actually gotten fairly good at this, probably because I've had a relatively unfair advantage having played for so long uh, previously in the past. So what the heck is going on with Mount Your Friends for the people who have not seen this so far, which, you know, might be many of you. I'm not actually sure what kind of reach this game has had uh, outside of when we played it on the show and, well, I mean, obviously, like, PewDiePie and Uber Hex or Nova played it and stuff like that, so like, maybe I'm self-inflating myself a little bit. Um, but it is basically, if you remember Quop, or you remember spe more specifically GURP, um, which was uh, made by Bennett Foti as well, the uh, co-op developer. Basically, uh, I'm using the 360 controller here to uh, independently control every single limb on our uh, our units here. And what we have to do is basically try to rock climb them up here. So it's very similar to Quop. It's very, very similar to GURP. But it's got its own kind of thing going on as well. Um, and obviously the kind of like, you know, raunchy atmosphere of it or the aesthetic of it is... Uh, one of the big draws relative to those games. Let's try to get ourselves up here. We may not actually finish this um, basic climb. It's one of those weird games, one of those weird situations, I should say, where... Um, well, let's try a little spin there, there we go. Uh, where I actually feel like the the kind of like side modes that are included in the game, at least for me personally, are a little bit more fun uh, than the vanilla multiplayer mode, if, if that makes sense. We'll see how high we can get though, for now anyway, for at least a little bit here. Uh, because I feel like the game is kind of more well suited to, to short bursts of, of gameplay, if that makes sense. That's why the multiplayer is so much fun. Um, because you end up, you know, only playing for a turn at a time, which is a minute or less, and then you, you pass it off to your friend and vice versa. Now, I'll admit it's not necessarily the most, uh, the greatest praise for a game to say, hey, the less you play it, the more fun it is. But, you know, if the Binding of Isaac was eight hours long per run, you probably would not enjoy it as much because it would just be kind of laborious to play. Uh, the, the more objective and like more bite-sized game modes that we'll come across here uh, are the, the preferred style for me in playing the game. But the basic mode does give you a little bit of an idea of how things work and you know how you're trying to climb your way up here. Let's be honest, you probably know by this point in the video whether this is something you're going to be interested in to begin with. If you're the kind of person that needs to get 100 hours out of you know every game that you buy on Steam, this is not going to do it for you. If you're the kind of person and you're like, all I play is, you know, Civ and EU4. This is not for you. And I'm not trying to pass a judgment like that uh, either way. But if you're the kind of person who maybe, you know, gets into that Surgeon Simulator stuff. Uh, I'm trying to think of what were some other, like, oh, I missed it, but I can still get back up. We got plenty of time. 
Uh, I'm trying to think of what were some of the other like surgeon simulatory type games. Not not even so much Goat Simulator. I wouldn't necessarily compare this uh, to that uh, so readily. Um, but uh, definitely like the Quop and, and GURP comparisons are there. I really can't stress enough that you know I, I I played Mount Your Friends for a while prior to its Steam release, and I I knew it was coming out on Steam. I didn't know what was going to be added to the game. Um, but the online multiplayer is actually like a really really fun addition that could easily give you uh, a few hours of. Uh, Kind of entertaining diversion and if you think I'm just blowing smoke up your ass when I say that you should seriously go watch Nick and I play it on the on the stream basically the way that the competitive multiplayer works is that you t you alternate and uh, well there's a, uh, two different ways you can go horizontally or vertically but if you're playing vertically it's just like this except you alternate turns and uh, whoever fails loses so if you can't get to the top if you can't you know ex you know uh, expand the threshold within 60 seconds then then you lose um, and that's bad for business obviously and there's a surprising amount of strategic depth that goes into it. I know that sounds silly, you're looking at this and you're like, this is a game about, you know, floppy dongs and stuff like that, or floppy zippers, I guess, in this case. Sincerely, there is a surprising degree of strategic depth. I'm not saying it's going to be at the International next year, but Nick and I were coming up with some pretty bold strategies and, and executing them, and, and it really uh, was kind of shocking how much uh, fun it was to play the online multiplayer. As a single-player experience, it's not super... Uh, deep is maybe the most polite way to describe it, but it's the kind of thing that, you know, you're not going to get 20 hours, well, there are people out there who will, because I, you know, there's always people out there who get, yeah, I see these Steam reviews for games, and it's like, I don't really like this game, but I put 24 hours into it, and, uh, you know, I became the second best player in the world at it, because that's just the kind of person I am, and there's nothing wrong with that. So there will be people out there who will get 20 hours out of this, the vast majority of you will not, and that's okay for a number of reasons, one of which is that, you know, I, I think that for five bucks, uh, a few hours of zany single player fun is, uh, fun in and of itself, um, but the, the multiplayer as well is, is really the, the kind of shining star here, if that makes sense. And the multiplayer seems to work. This isn't like a Nidhogg situation where I only tested the multiplayer, you know, with Kate and we're on the same internet connection basically, so it wasn't technically local, but it wasn't, uh, you know, probably truly online either. Um, this was, uh, you know, Nick and I who have a substantial amount of problems with like every game that we play. And it, it actually works, so hey, that's um, more than you can say for a lot of games that come out, uh, fortunately or unfortunately. I might have just screwed myself there. I, you know what? I think if I really crab walk my way over here quickly, I might still be able to make my way up to the top. My problem in Mount Your Friends um, is that I always try to go a little bit too bold with things. Yep, there's a pretty good example of it right there. I'm always the guy who's like, why, you know, crawl when you can spin through the air and that leads to me making some pretty poor decisions as you may or may not be able to see yeah we're definitely not gonna be able to get to the top actually height reach 69 feet well it's just perfect isn't it that's not a very good leaderboard score at all we'll return to the menu here and play some other modes so let's play some um, let's play some gem collection that'll give me some time to talk basically the way that gem collection works is that we have uh, 120 seconds to collect as many gems as possible um, which is a little bit more of an objective-based game mode, and one that requires you to move horizontally, uh, as well as vertically. Which I think adds a little bit of depth to it. Let's be honest, okay? Th there are some things that you could pretty easily describe as negatives going on in Mount Your Friends. Visually, the game looks very, very, uh, Xbox Live indie gamesy, and that's a shitty, like, way to phrase that complaint. But it's also kind of the most effective way that I- oh my god, get up there- that I know to phrase it, like, it looks like an Xbox Live indie game, and most Xbox Live indie games are not necessarily known for, you know, remarkable visual style or even execution. I would say that, you know, even though I like the game, visually it's kind of unimpressive. It, it does the trick, you know, you know what you're looking at for the most part, but it, it looks pretty programmer arty, and, you know, you're not going to be saying, like, oh, you know, best looking games of 2014, it was like, Transcend or Transistor and, uh, Mount Your Friends. The soundtrack is... It's a mixed bag. I kind of feel like it's like royalty-free classical music, but I'm not totally sure. I don't mean to insult a composer by saying that. Hell, you should take it as a compliment. This could be Beethoven, for all I know, in my, um, you know, limited knowledge of classical music. Um, but, and the, the main value in the soundtrack is that it's, you know, really... How much should I put this? It's not very fitting with it like it's it's dissonant with the actual gameplay itself if that makes sense you know the, this game is this silly you know friend mounting simulator whatever you want to call it 
And uh, the music is like this epic and sad, you know, adagio for strings type stuff. Um, which, which is funny, there, you know, there's some innate humor there. Um, but it's, it's also not necessarily the most fantastic thing in the world. But there's just something about the, the charm of the game um, that it, it makes me like it and, and actually enjoy playing it. Uh, even in the single player modes, which I, I do still feel are less engaging than the multiplayer modes. I'm gonna try this again because I did so badly. Let's try a gem collection again. I kinda think I got stuck with a bad seed there. Um, like bad seed for where the gem spawned. It's, a, it's also a very simplistic game. There's not a whole lot of depth going on here and... You know, it, it shows in things like this gem collection mode. It's just like... There's like a hundred modes in the game. There's nothing wrong with that. There's not literally a hundred. There's like... Twelve, maybe. Um... But, and none of them really feel like, you know, this is the main mode or anything like that. It kind of feels like when you get one of those, like, here's a, a handheld with, like, a hundred games on it. You ask for, like, Super Mario Land, and then your mom comes back, and she's like, Well, at the store, they had this game. It costs the same as Super Mario Land, and you're gonna say, Super Mario Land? Don't you mean Super Mario Brothers or World? No, it's the, it's the name of the Game Boy game. She went, she went to buy the Game Boy game, and anyway, she came back, and she's like, The man had... Electronics Boutique told me that this has a hundred games on it, and it's the same price, why wouldn't you want it? Um, and you're like, Mom, it's not the same. And that's kind of an, oop, kind of an insulting way to talk about Mount Your Friends, but to some extent, I do feel that it's like, it's kind of quantity over quality, but it still works. And I realize that it might sound like, oh, no, 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 no. It might sound like I've been mentioning a lot of negatives, and then at the end of it, I'm like, yeah, but it's still pretty fun, but... That is kind of like, there, there's a lot of like objective stuff, maybe, I shouldn't say objective, there's a lot of stuff that is not necessarily for me normally in games like this, like if you watch me play Goat Simulator, a lot of people felt that I was just a humorless bastard, they're like, you don't get the joke, I get the joke, you're a goat, yeah, but you know, you don't have a sense of humor, it's okay, I have a sense of humor, and hopefully like this proves it, because there's a lot of stuff where, you know, with, with your average game, if it was like, you know, big floppy dongs, I'd be like, cool, big floppy dongs, that's funny, right, not, but the, the core kind of like gameplay conceits here are engaging enough that I enjoy playing it regardless. And I really can't stress enough that uh, it might come as a surprise to you. Come on, you can do it. No, you can't. Um, like, sincerely, the multiplayer, the competitive multiplayer side is really, really fun. And there's a surprising amount of strategic depth. So it's not just silly fun, and it's not just a one-trick pony or a one-trick goat, if you will. Uh, in terms of its humor. There's actually like some engaging um, strategic depth going on as well. Let's check out some of the other modes, shall we? So there's online. Online only has horizontal and vertical, but that's really all I've needed. Uh, Nick and I played it for an hour and the time flew by. I wish I could show it off in this video, but you know, scheduling conflicts and stuff like that. Uh, as far as single player, there's long distance climb, which I actually uh, like a little bit more than the basic climbing mode. Because you have a time constraint, as opposed to, you know, in, in basic climb, the quote-unquote, like, you know, normal mode. Um, you, you basically, you can climb, as long as you can still break the threshold of, uh, like, the, your previous uh, mount's height, you can just continue going ad nauseum. And I did find myself a little bit bored, like, the first, I only got 69 in this video, um, but the, uh, the first one that I did off-camera, I got, like, 120. And it took me, like, maybe 25 minutes, and by the end of it, I was like, you know what, I'm actually kind of, like, bored of this basic climb, even though it's the vanilla mode of the game. Um, which is not necessarily a great sign, but then as I got further and further into these kind of, like, side modes, I was like, you know what, I actually prefer this a lot, because, uh, breaking it up into, like, kind of two-minute gameplay bursts as opposed to, to 20 minutes, I think is, uh, uh I don't know, it, it's a lot more engaging, I felt. So we'll see how high we can get here. In a way, the, the structure of the game actually reminds me a little bit more of a, a, a pretty similar game. Uh, probably Archery. Probably Archery, um, you know, was on Greenlight and then eventually came out on Steam. And it was kind of the same thing where it really felt like in probably Archery, they didn't really know what the best game modes were, but they're like, hey, we'll make up for that by offering you, you know, like a hundred game modes that you can try out. And, you know, some people tut-tutted at, at probably Archery in the same way that I tut-tutted at something like Goat Simulator. So don't let me ever say that I'm not a hypocrite. Um, but, uh, I, I thought probably Archery was actually, like, that variety in the game did make up for some of the shortcomings of, you know, the individual modes. And I, I feel the same way about Mount Your Friends, actually. It's a weird game to kind of, to, to review, if, if that makes sense. Because I know, it, it's, let's put it this way, it's one of those games that's very easy to judge on its aesthetics. It's very easy to look at this and say, like, oh, like, I'm not interested in that at all. 
And probably for the majority of people who look at it and say that, they're right. And there's nothing wrong with that. Not every game is, you know, right for everybody, and there's there's no objectivity necessarily in games criticism and stuff like that. That was a pretty good hide. I'm content with that. Um, but I think that there's a little bit more under the surface of Mount Your Friends that is not necessarily 100% easy to see right off the bat, and that's what I'm trying to talk about. At five bucks, this is not a must-buy for everybody, but especially if you have somebody that, you know, has a sense of humor that you can play it with online, I think you'll have a really good time with it. Uh, so that was the, the long-distance climb. Coin collect is pretty similar, you just try to get as many coins as you can. Similar to gem collection, I should say. Five minute dash is, uh, you know, like long distance climb, except you only have five minutes, or do, you have five minutes instead of two minutes, I should say. Horizontal climb is a little bit more interesting in that you're trying to make a, um, a bridge that goes as far as possible, horizontally as opposed to vertically. And again, you know, these are pretty basic, like, shifts on the Mount Your Friends formula if you will. Um, instead of building out horizontally, you're building out vertically, and if you touch the ground, you lose, or if you fall and, you know, or if you can't get further in 60 seconds, you lose, or if you fall and touch that kind of, like, caution tape down there, you lose. Alright, that was, uh, pretty risky of me. So we're gonna try to build this pretty highly here. So, I mean, this is why I, I really recommend the multiplayer mode, because in single player, the conceit wears thin pretty quickly, you know? Basically, I have the same strategy every single turn. Don't die. And that's not to say there isn't, like, a higher level strategy involved um, for, for good players. I just don't know what it is. But in the multiplayer mode, instead of, like, well, my only goal is to, like, build it higher, um, you actually come up with these strategies where, like, okay, I'm gonna make it as hard as possible on the next person. And maybe they make it, and if they make it, well, then you just made it as hard as possible on yourself, and they probably made it as hard as possible on you as well. Um, so it, it's got some interesting stuff going on here. I don't want to oversell Mount your friends, because this is not a game that probably too many people are going to be, you know, when they do their year-end list, they're like, oh, I spent a hundred hours with Mount Your Friends, it was like the most engaging experience I had all year. And I apologize, because that sounds like a little dismissive. That being said, I, what I'm wary about is that people are going to just look at it and be like, oh, that's a, that's like try not to fart, right? That's like a silly Xbox Live indie games thing. Um that I'm not necessarily, like, I'm too cool for, basically. You might be too cool for, but I would recommend checking it out anyway, especially, again, if you could have somebody to actually play the multiplayer with. I promise you, the multiplayer is unlike anything you've ever played. The the competitive co-op uh, comparison works totally fine. It, it's, it's really apt. So this is, like, the easiest high score I'm ever gonna get here. I'm pretty sure that I'm recording this video, like, literally as the game is coming out on Steam, so I might want to check out the leaderboards just at the end, because it's the last chance I'll ever have uh, to to pretend that I'm good at the game. You gotta, like, this Morph Ball stuff is really the good stuff you gotta do. You gotta flip a little bit. Actually, it's the most terrible decision of all time to flip, uh, because you lose control, but sometimes you gotta just accept losing control is the best way to gain control overall, you know? You know what? How did I not compare this to Octodad the entire time? I'm sure that people are watching this video saying, holy shit. How can you not compare this to Octodad? The biggest quote-unquote, you know, well, not quote-unquote because I'm just making it up here. Uh, as if it has any kind of, you know, relevance. But uh, the biggest quop like this year. Yeah, it's got a little bit of an Octodad thing. It's like, you know, competitive Octodad. Imagine if Octodad uh, tasked you in a multiplayer mode with like climbing a tower or something like that. And I really am harping on the multiplayer mode. If you have nobody to play multiplayer with and you have no interest in playing with strangers um, or, you know, finding a community online if there if there's going to be one, you know, it's hard to say that in advance, um, then it's probably the kind of thing where maybe you'd be better off picking it up on Xbox Live Indie Games or, uh, you know, waiting for a sale when it comes down in price. Not that $5 is super expensive, but admittedly for the single player experience that you're going to get here, $5 is not going to be a, a perfect value proposition for everybody. For a lot of people, even. Um, I enjoy it, but, uh, you know, I have, I have a history with the game, and, you know, the, the developer put custom skins for Josh, Nick, and myself in the game, so, um, you know, there's probably a little bit of innate bias there that I'm, I'm more than happy to admit if it wasn't already obvious from the relationship we've had with the game over the course of its development. Um, but, yeah, the, the multiplayer mode genuinely adds a lot. Uh, like, when, we were, when Nick and I were talking about putting this on the uh, NLSS docket, I suggested it, and Nick's like, yeah, but I, I worry that it won't be fun for an hour, because we've played it before, and, you know, it, it does kind of feel sometimes like it's a one-trick pony. Like, you're you're climbing, you're swinging your dongers, I get it. it it's over, right? Um, 
And then after we played it, I, I didn't necessarily disagree with him, by the way. But then after we played the multiplayer mode, we were both like, that like that time flew by. That, that mode really adds a lot to the uh, to the game. I know I'm kind of evangelizing it here, but sincerely, that was like it was just super unexpected. I didn't even know that it was gonna have online multiplayer. Uh, and then for the online multiplayer to actually add so much to the experience and I mean beyond that for the online multiplayer to actually work was just kind of surprising given the track record that a lot of you know indie releases and other releases not just indie releases but uh, particularly indie releases have had on Steam recently where it's like we have online multiplayer but unless you live in the same apartment it doesn't work so not pointy fingers Nidhogg which I still love but just wish that the multiplayer actually worked reliably, uh, anyway. Different strokes for different folks, I suppose. Um, come on. Okay, this comes... Uh, we still got plenty of time here. And again, like, I, I much prefer the modes that are a little bit stricter with respect to their time, as opposed to the stuff where you have 60 seconds to get as far as you possibly can. Uh, because once you get pretty good at it, these runs stop being, like, quick zany fun, and they start being, like, 25 minute long gauntlets to like get as far as possible, which is kind of cool from a score attacky standpoint, but At the same time that was like a sweet Vault there or plant there at the end, but at the same time it does kind of get a little laborious You're like I want to play a quick round of mount your friends and you know when you start playing mount your friends That'll be like 10 minutes and then by the time you get good. You're like shit clear my schedule. I got to play around and mount your friends um, just lounging around here, no big deal. So this is probably going to be the last unit that I'm actually going to send uh, on this journey here, uh, and then we'll we'll kill our run, and maybe we'll look at the leaderboards. Maybe we won't. It doesn't really matter. The leaderboards are actually kind of like willfully laborious, if that makes sense. Um, you actually have to mount your way to the leaderboards, which makes it really tedious to kind of see your score. But I think that's part of the joke. All right, um, let's just exit. I'll show you the leaderboards. See? So there we can see our leaderboard score for basic climb there. We're in second place. Developers in first. Way to go, Bear Tabby. 65. Pretty depressing. Um, let's try to mount a little bit higher. And see if there's anything else. Long distance run, 295. Not even close. I'm in like second last place. Not too many people have played it yet in pre-release, I guess. Hanging Dash. The fourth place with 209. We didn't play Hanging Dash. Hanging Dash is all right, though. Basically, you you try to... It's it's like horizontal climb, except you start on the ceiling instead of the roof. Um, sure. I'm actually mounting pretty, mounting pretty well here. How do we do in gem field? Like, that's... I was pleased with myself there. Ah, fourth place. Okay. Renault is uh, on there. That's funny. Um, okay. And the last one. Long distance climb. 221. That puts me fifth. I'm not too pleased, but I'm still pretty good on that first leaderboard position. Anyway, oh, this is just perfect, isn't it? This is Mount Your Friends, nestled tightly between the zippers of an, another adult male. Nothing wrong with it. There is a way to add custom skins to the game, by the way. Um, I haven't done it myself, but we have been informed how to do it. Mount Your Friends is five bucks. I think if you have someone to play with online, you will easily get uh, you know a couple evenings worth of entertainment out of uh, the surprising strategic depth in the multiplayer mode. Single player, you know, it's quantity over quality. Some of the modes aren't super engaging for me. Some of them are pretty fun. I really doubt that many people would get more than a few hours out of uh, like the overall variety of the game in single player mode. But uh, if you have somebody to play with in multiplayer mode, I, I really recommend it. I very surprisingly give it a thumbs up for the multiplayer mode specifically. Apart from that, it's still pretty good, but your mileage may vary. So there will be a link in the video description below. It's four bucks on Steam for its opening week sale, five bucks after that. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click the like button. It helps me out a great deal. And of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. But for now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.